Volkswagen Beetle, 1965, INI 669. Fiat 600, 1969, SZU 165. Ford Capri, 1969, 1692, XZ. On the 24th of October, using these three cars, seven days began its survey of garage servicing. Sunday afternoon, preparations began. Each car was scheduled to go to five different garages throughout the week. So with our three cars being serviced every day, we planned to end the week with results from 15 garages. Every time a car went in, we would ask for the same thing, a major service, please. We examined the service manuals of each car and selected six points common to them all. These were to be the key points in our test. We also selected another nine points, most of which were covered by the service manuals and all of which one would reasonably expect a competent garage to cover. These points were chosen by a team of five experts who worked on the programme with us. Donald Sullivan, a fully certified mechanic, formerly foreman mechanic with two leading Dublin garages before setting up by himself. Sullivan did the actual preparation and checking of the cars. He, in turn, was supervised by three engineers. Andrew Penston, a graduate of the Institute of the Motor Industry and of the Institute of Automobile Assessors. Michael O'Doherty, a consultant mechanical and electrical engineer with DLAP and Waller. James Lacey, lecturer in electrical engineering, UCD, also a mechanical and electrical engineer and co-designer of the UCD electric car. And supervising them to make absolutely certain, Dr. Seamus Timoney, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering, UCD, with special responsibility for the extensive research programme on vehicle engines, formerly Head of Research and Development at Alvis Motors in Coventry, and currently a consultant to British Leyland, the United States Army, and Continental Motors in automotive matters. They were told, these three cars will be serviced tomorrow. When they come back, you must be able to tell us whether or not our six key points and our nine other points have or have not been covered. At no time were our experts given the names of the actual garages that had been booked to do the services. Indeed, to ensure absolute secrecy and fair play, only four people knew. The editor, the director and his production assistant, and a girl who helped the director with delivery and pickup on three occasions. Of our six key points, four were concerned with the car's good running order and two with safety. There were no traps, nothing unusual. They were all standard run-of-the-mill points listed in the service manuals of all the cars. Beginning with the key points, the experts started preparing the cars. The plugs. Would they be examined and correctly gapped? Each car was fitted with a new set of plugs. They were marked with a saw. The points. Again, new points with our own marking. The air cleaner. We sprayed it with paint to see if it would be replaced. The tappets. Would they be correctly adjusted? And our first and most vital safety measure, the brake fluid. In every car, we removed two-thirds of the fluid from the master cylinder reservoir. Would they refill it? And in every car, we recorded the tyre pressures. These were the six key points on which we would judge the basic performance of every garage. Then we chose another nine points to give us an overall view on every service. The fan belt, we loosened it to see if it would be tightened. The headlamps, would they be correctly focused? The timing was checked. The oil filter, not every car was mechanically identical, but the same function was checked. In the Volks, we sprayed the oil strainer inspection plate. Would it be removed? The front wheel bearing, would it be adjusted? We also prepared the handbrake, the brake adjust, and the carburetor slow running. And we disconnected a trafficator lead on each car. When it was ready, each car went on its way.
The garages were chosen at random. The only conscious choice we made was to ensure that the main dealers were included and there were some small men. We also made sure that some were on the north side of the city and some in the south. In every garage, we gave the same blanket instruction, give it a major service. They went to the big and they went to the small, the well-known and the not so well-known. The program's director left them in and collected them. On three occasions, we used a girl. On one occasion only with the Fiat, we didn't use the words a major service, but said a really good service, please. And then they came back. Right, Don, we check the fan belt first. That's slack, that one is tight. That it's one's very, very tight. Very tight, yeah. okay. Right. Um, the air filter, Don, should have been replaced with the service. I think we've marked this one. Black paint on the bottom of it. It's the, the same, same one. one. Black paint. Mm, okay, not done. Um, the Gosh. plugs now, Don, I think if we could put a plug and uh, check the gap. There's a mark. That's the mark plug there. I see. So they're the same plugs. As well. Check the gap. Will it take 25 to No, I don't know. Just about 15, 15, 15, okay. They haven't been adjusted. They haven't been adjusted at all. Right, uh, I wonder whether the tappets adjusted. That should have been done on this service too. Mark is we still marked, the same. it's still the same. Yeah. No, it hasn't been disturbed. The rocker cover hasn't been removed. That means the tappets have scarcely been done. Um, I think the points, ignition points now, next up. First of all, check, have they been replaced? No, no, they're the other ones. Well, let's they're see the if the contact the gap is set correctly. <coughs> Should be a fifteenth. Fifteenth, yes. Not fifteen. Find out what wheel what gap are they? Not ten. <coughs> Not ten. It's opening them slightly. Yeah. Below eight. Less than eight. So that's far, far too tight. Well, gentlemen, this is our, our first car, the Fiat, the very first one we've had in. Now, this one was sent in and we asked for a really good service. What's happened to it, Jim? Well, the spark plugs uh, haven't been removed. Uh, they f we fitted it with new plugs when it was prepared. Uh, the same plugs are in the car. The gap is set to small. Before we go into all those <coughs> details, could you sum that up for me? Has it had a really good service? No, I should think, looking at this, that it's had a rather poor service. Well, now, we have been charged for an 18,000-mile service, okay. and the service booklet within, within yes, this... Yes, I have it here, actually. Has, has the service been anything like completed? No, no. Well, gentlemen, how much do you think the work done on this is worth? About four pounds. Not very much. Do you think seven pound ninety is... I'd say that's a bit excessive. Definitely. Well, as I say, this is, this is our first car, and Andy, we, we better move on and see. Professor has been working on the, the Ford. Don, can you come down with me? That was the really good service. In all the other garages, we used the words, a major service, please. The reading on the Ford's mileometer was over 36,000 miles, but when we collected it from a Ford main dealer, we were told that they didn't give it a major service, it's only done 3,000 miles. A Ford 3,000 mile service includes our six key points and eight of the nine others, so we examined it for a 3,000 mile service. Well, gentlemen, it, it looks as if that certain things we, that should have been done haven't been done according to that 3,000 mile check. But, That's correct. But what about value for money? On the work that was actually done to the car, what do you think we should have been charged? Well, um, assuming, um, say, a charge of... 250, that is two and a half pounds per, uh, per hour. Was there an hour's work That's on the a, car? There wasn't, no. Much no. less than an hour. Much less than an hour. Yeah. So we, we'll assume But they'll charge an hour in any case. Eh? Yeah, so I'd take say, 250. I'd say we'll take 250 as the labour charge and allow pound 25 shillings for the oil. So, so about 
Three fifty, something like that. Three fifty, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's interestingly enough, almost exactly what we have been charged for what they call the three thousand mile service. So yes, but of course it's not a complete three thousand mile service. No, there according were, to this, there but were a number of things which we mentioned to you which yeah, weren't done. Which weren't done. Yeah. But the 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 total bill came to eight pounds fifty. So this car actually cost us eight pounds fifty because, as you know, they decided to replace the sealed beam unit. Now, why why was that done? Well, this we uh, are finding difficult to understand because apparently the one which was left in the car as being the faulty one is perfectly good as far as we can see. We are, of course, arranging to leave it with the agents to find out, to check if it actually is as good as we think it is. But as far as we can see, it should not have been replaced. This process of preparation and after-service check went on for five nights. Not every garage was in time. On one occasion, the Fiat was held overnight. The schedule couldn't be broken, but now we would have coverage of only 14 garages, not 15. Slowly, the results came in. Not one garage came near to covering all our six key points. Not one did what the manufacturers said they should do, and not one did what their own bills claimed they did. And some of the results were not only bad, they were frightening. Our major safety item was brake fluid. It's essential to the safety of any car, and something that's absurdly simple to attend to. Lift the bonnet and fill the cylinder, easier and quicker than filling up with petrol. Seven of the 14 garages failed in this elementary and vital point. If you have no fluid in the hydraulic system which operates the brakes, you have no brakes. The braking system is one of the most important aspects in the car, one of the most important components in the car, and a man's life may very well depend on it. And above all other things, brakes should be checked and the brake fluid. There have been quite a number of points that have come up during the survey, but in my opinion, this is probably the most dangerous and damning of the whole lot. Yes, it can't be. No, there's an open axle on this. It can't the facts be. on one of the cars, the Fiat, were even more serious. No, a master cylinder, a wheel cylinder leak, I should say. We'll have, we'll have to get the wheel and off and have a look. Yeah. Uh, John, could you take off the wheel here and pull off the brake drum to inspect the condition inside. We've got a very, very bad leak here. This is brake fluid, all right. Um, was the level of the master cylinder checked on the service? Uh, no, 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 it's very low, it's very, very low on the very, master cylinder. Very obvious brake fluid leak here. It should certainly have been reported. The linings are absolutely saturated. And that should have certainly been reported. The... It's really dangerous. Well, the implications are so frightening. Unchecked, this vehicle was a danger to life. It went to four garages. Two of them refilled the cylinder and warned of the danger. But the other two neither refilled the cylinder nor mentioned the dangerous leak. If the average man in the street had one of those cars, you know, a brake failure is only a matter of a week or two away from it.